Hello everyone and welcome to this week's extend script slash extension quick tip tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you how to add drag and drop functionality so that you can easily import your items from your uh, extension directly into After Effects or Premiere. Now essentially, I'm going to be starting with a mostly complete extension in this case, and these elements are basically just video files on the computer. But in terms of this actual extension, there's a video file and right next to it, there's an After Effects project as well. So what the goal is, is basically we want to have a drag feature for this video and when we drop it over After Effects or outside of our extension, we basically want to look inside the folder that video is located in, check if there's any other files, maybe with the extension AEP, and if there is, bring that into the project. So if you're not familiar with event listeners, they're very useful in JavaScript and HTML. Essentially what we're going to be using is a on drag event which is similar to if you're detecting if someone's clicking on something. So over on the W3Schools HTML5 drag and drop page, it gives a lot of great examples of how to basically apply this property to any element, which in this case we want to apply to these each of these videos. We want to add the ability to drag and drop it. And the way we do that is when we're, say, defining the image, you can see it has just the normal HTML tags, the ID, the source of the image, and then it has the property draggable. Is this element draggable? And if you set that to true, then it then becomes basically an element that you can drag anywhere on the screen. And then essentially what you do is instead of adding say an on click or an on mouse over, you wanna say on drag start equals a function. And this function, whenever you start dragging, could track the mouse. Is it on a certain position of the screen? But not only do you need to tell the extension which elements you can drag around the screen, you can see this video is now draggable. I can drag it anywhere. Uh, but that's not enough to be able to, to drop it and import it anywhere. It's just a feature to be able to drag it. So what we need to do as well is have a feature that allows things to be dropped on them. So if we can detect something being dropped on, then we can tell it, hey, look at this thing that was dropped and grab the After Effects project right next to it, please. And in W3Schools example, you can basically drag this image. And this is when you click on it, draggable, you can see it dragging around. And then the event that receives the drag or the drop, so to speak, is the uh, text box here. So it has the on drop property. And when you drop it, it runs a function. So if we drop it, it then pops the image in here. So the way it's actually getting this image inside of this text box here is it's saying ev.preventDefault, which will basically cancel any mouse events or clickable things. And then it's gonna create a variable for the text. Then it's basically going to take our target element that we dropped it onto, this text box, and it's gonna append the child or add the child element. Uh, which is equivalent to our data we just dropped in here. So that's kind of uh, W3Schools way of explaining it. I'll really quick show you how I did it. Essentially, inside of the code, I have these generated by JavaScript. They're not there from the start of the script. Um, it reads through some folders and then using JavaScript generates these. So I have this generate previews function. Ignoring that this is a lot of code and a little bit complicated, there's basically two main little things we need to look at. So I have these holders here. And you can see I'm setting the attribute called on drag start. So whenever I have one of these video holders and I start dragging it, it's gonna run this function called drag start. And essentially whenever drag start is gone through, I have a simple a global variable called is dragging. This is either true or false. If the user is currently dragging something with their mouse, it's true. If it's false, then they're not dragging something with their mouse. It's pretty simple, but we wanna make sure we keep track of that for later checking. Then I'm gonna take uh, another attribute and add it called draggable and set that equal to true. Again, this allows the element to be dragged around. So not only have we allowed it to be dragged around, but we've also said whenever we start dragging it, set a variable equal to true. So we know globally, wherever we're at, we can check is dragging, is it true or false? And that will tell us whether or not a certain event is being done. And then there's one last thing that makes it all run through and then finally import stuff. Um, after we've set it to be able to be draggable and to start tracking when we drag it, we want to set up the on drag end attribute. What this means is when it's done dragging, we want to then go into a function and do something. So there's a function I set up called drag end, 
and it's a little bit more complicated, but relatively simple. What it basically does is it checks where the mouse position is. Is it outside or inside of the extension window? Because if they're done dragging and we know that they're inside of the extension, we don't want, there's nothing we can do. We can't import the thing into the extension. We want to make sure we're outside of the extension, which means that yes, if it's outside the extension, definitely import that. So inside of the drag end, we're bringing in two arguments, the element itself that's being dragged, and then the event, the mouse event, which contains things like the mouse position and X and Y uh, coordinates. So we're first going to set is dragging equal to false because we're done dragging set it equal to false. Then we're going to create a variable called the mouse position, which is equal to the event that we, the mouse event that we're bringing in and the screen X and screen Y. This will give us the actual mouse position in terms of 0 to 1920 or 0 to 1080, depending on your screen size. Then we're going to create a variable representing our extension window. Then I'm going to set uh, two variables for the extension size and extension position, which is important so that I can compare them to the mouse position. And then this simple check here uh, will check whether or not it's inside or outside of the extension. Essentially, this algorithm I skimmed offline here will check if the point is inside or outside. And based on this if statement, if it's inside, then we want to use our import function. So then it's then finally going to go into this import click function, which will take our element itself, skim out the ID, which is essentially the location of it, and it's going to then use the CS interface to go into our JavaScript extended script and run the function mogurt import, which I could have probably named a little bit better. Not all of them are mogurts in this case, but essentially what it does is it checks, are you in After Effects or Premiere? If you're in After Effects, uh, what we want to do is run a custom AE import function, which then goes deeper and deeper into grabbing the path plus the After Effects project uh, and then importing it into the project and adding it, organizing it, and opening it up so the user can see. So if I was to try and sum up everything in this quick tip tutorial, essentially to make a drag and drop extension possible, you need to create a, an element that has the ability to be draggable by saying draggable equals true. You basically need to set up that attribute in the HTML or JavaScript. And then when you start dragging it, you need to track that. You'll want to have some sort of global variable that changes to let you know you're dragging it. So if you are dragging it, set that equal to true. And if you're not, or if you're at the end of your drag, set it equal to false. Finally, if you want to specifically check whether they're dropping it outside of your extension, or if you want to just detect any drop, um, you can do that as well. But I like to be a little more specific and be saying if it's outside of the extension, then import it into the program. Uh, essentially, what you need to do is have an on drag end attribute instead of dr on drag start or draggable. And when you on drag end, you essentially set up the same thing where you tell it it's not dragging anymore, and then you calculate the mouse position, compare it to the position of the extension, and if it's outside of the extension, run whatever code you have to import that uh, video or any associated files with it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick tip tutorial. It was a very information packed one, but I will be doing more longer and more in-depth explanatory videos of extensions in the future, including full from scratch to complete extension videos uh, to better show you the entire process, how debugging is very annoying and time consuming and a lot of other useful tips and tricks. If you enjoyed this week's video, hit the thumbs up button. Make sure to follow us down below on Instagram and GitHub and hit subscribe to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.